Hello, I'm Jack Shagna, and this is the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad Story. Hi, I'm Henry Peden. The rail line connected Baltimore with York, Pennsylvania, and was commonly known as the Ma and Pa. The Ma and Pa traversed through central Hartford County and brought much prosperity to the communities it served. The rail line carried the mail, picked up milk cans, moved agricultural products and mined minerals to market, transported people going to work, and provided transportation to children attending school. Connecting the cities of Baltimore and York, Pennsylvania, it expanded the reach of Hartford County citizens to shop for urban products. The intrinsic value of a railroad derives from its steel wheels rolling over steel rails, moving goods at one-tenth the force compared to wagons traversing roads, and doing so at a speed over 10 times as fast. By significantly reducing the cost per ton mile of moving cargo, and also providing safe and fast passenger travel, the Ma and Pa was destined to permeate the Harford County landscape for many years. Every town, village, and crossroad hamlet wanted to have access to a railroad that could deliver far-flung goods, which could be offered for sale in local country stores. To entice the location of a line, residents could purchase railroad stock or individuals in a community could offer the railroad a right-of-way. A few examples of stations in Hartford County were Faustin, Bel Air, Forest Hill, Powellsville, Whiteford, and Cardiff. Many will be surprised that the village of Forest Hill hosted a meeting in March 1877 where the former president of the Peach Bottom Railway, Stephen Boyd, extolled the virtues of a three-foot narrow-gauge railroad to an assemblage of rail supporters. This meeting would later be recognized as the birthplace of the Ma and Pa in Harford County. Our narrator begins the program addressing the grandfather rail line of the Ma and Pa, the Maryland Central Railroad. In 1867, the General Assembly authorized the appropriately named Maryland Central Railroad that was chartered to provide rail service through the central parts of Baltimore and Harford counties. Unable to raise funding, it languished, and in 1882 merged with the Baltimore and Delta Railroad, retaining its name, but losing control to new management that completed the line to Bel Air by 1883. Three years later, a merger with the York and Peach Bottom Railway created the Baltimore and Lehigh Railroad that operated in Pennsylvania as the York Southern Railroad and in Maryland as the Baltimore and Lehigh Railway. The Ma and Pa was established in 1901. The predecessor rail lines had been narrow gauge, but to be interoperable with other Maryland and Pennsylvania railroads, a transition to standard gauge was required. As a result, the narrow gauge line with many curves and high trestles was re-railed into a meandering and elevated roadbed, exhibiting a charm that was admired all over the world. Hobbyists as well were inspired to emulate the Ma and Pa in their model railroading exhibits. The original Baltimore Railroad Station at mile marker zero was wooden and most likely of Borden Batten construction that was replaced by a stone structure in 1887 that four years later was designated the Baltimore and Lehigh Railroad. It was constructed with greenish serpentine mined in Harford County with sandstone trim of a reddish color from Dauphin County in Pennsylvania. An example of a serpentine structure can be seen in the village of Darlington at the Grace Memorial Episcopal Church. When serpentine is polished, it's generally called green marble that can be seen in the lobby of the old Bel Air Post Office, now the Historical Society. At the 2.6 mile marker, a train would stop for passengers at the Evergreen Station. This location also served as a depot where coal could be loaded into the tender of a stream locomotive via a conveyor. Later, an oil tank was installed to refuel diesel-electric locomotives. 
Homeland was a station stop at mile marker 4.3, where initially tickets were sold out of a railroad passenger car. In 1888, the Towson Union newspaper announced that the railroad had commenced the erection of a station house there. The new facility would serve as a passenger station, freight storage station, as well as a residence. In addition, the rail company erected a storage shed on the property. The Woodbrook station at mile 5.1 was completed in 1908 and described as an extremely attractive station house clad with weatherboard and shingles. For vehicular safety concerns, several years later crossing gates were installed. The station burned shortly before midnight on November 7, 1912, probably from the sparks of a passing freight engine, but was rebuilt the following year. On May 22, 1920, a freight train and passenger train met head-on at Woodbrook, resulting in the death of two railroad employees. Moses Shepard, a wealthy Quaker, died in 1857 and left $600,000 for the construction and maintenance of an asylum for the care and treatment of those mentally afflicted. An estate of over 370 acres near Towson, known today as Shepherd Pratt, was established and eventually opened in 1891 for the reception of patients. In 1902, a station shed at mile 6.2 was constructed by the Ma and Pa at a cost of $68. Upon leaving Shepherd and proceeding towards York, Pennsylvania, a train would pass over Trestle 65, just south of Towson, and then over Jail Trestle No. 70, as it entered the governmental seat of Baltimore County. The original Towson station at mile marker 7.0 had been built in 1882. In 1920, the facility was damaged by fire, possibly the result of a cigar tossed from a passing train. Much Later, about 1970, the station's appearance was captured by artist John Kendall. Towson Bridge No. 73 allowed trains to pass over York Road on their way out of town. The Utahwood Station, at mile marker 7.7, .7, received its name from a tuberculosis hospital that was on Burke Avenue in Towson. The station was also known as Towson Heights, which was in the vicinity of 1200 East Jopper Road. It was near a shopping center that is currently known as Towson Place, but was previously called Utahwood Plaza. In 1925, the railroad bridge over Jopper Road near the Utahwood Station collapsed when a sand truck collided with a support beam. A southbound oncoming train was alerted and able to stop before reaching the bridge. Before reaching the next station at Cowpens, a train passed over the Wash House Viaduct that was formerly in the area of today's Beltway and Lock Raven Boulevard. Located above Cromwell Bridge Road, Cowpens Station was at mile marker 9.6, having been named for a nearby historic estate. In 1892, however, the railroad renamed the station Oakley. A favorite stop for excursionists was Lock Raven Station at mile marker 11.2, where adventurous sightseers would depart and stroll to the dam on Big Gunpowder Falls that retained water for Baltimore City. Below the station, along Cromwell Bridge Road, was the former Sanders Restaurant that was famous for its ice cream. It's now McFall's Iron Horse Tavern. In 1910, a facility for juvenile offenders was located near Lock Raven, which later became known as the Charles H. Hickey Jr. School. Initially called the Maryland School for Boys, it became a stop and steam locomotive rewatering station on the Ma and Pa at mile marker 11.9. Proceeding northeast of the Maryland School Station, the Ma and Pa crossed Cub Hill Road, paralleling Big Gunpowder Falls, then passed over the stream on a bridge. Now generally running along the side of Glen Arm Road, there was a station at Summerfield, mile 12.6, Notch Cliff, mile 13.4, and a private station at Glen View, mile 13.7, where railroad president John W. Brown owned a Victorian hotel and advertised its amenities. 
This 1909 postcard shows the village station at Glen Arm, located at mile marker 14.9. The inserted lantern was used on the Mon Pa. Many years later, it looked remarkably the same, as evidenced by this circa 1939 photograph. After it was abandoned by the railroad, it was a cafe and convenience store in 1981 and by 2011, King's Pizza. Artist John Kendall painted the charming structure about 1970. However, today the station house is abandoned. It's believed the original 1883 Long Green Station at mile marker 15.8 was a board and batten structure, which later served as a freight shed. By 1903, a new station had been built that included living quarters upstairs for the station master and his family. The long green identification sign from this station was later acquired, restored, and preserved by a Ma and Pa collector, most of whom are proud to be called rail nuts. When the train pulled into Hyde Station at mile marker 16.8, the conductor would announce, Hyde, 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 this was reminiscent of the childhood game that much later provided the name for a consignment boutique there called Hide and Seek. Two first-class hide tickets, one to Delta and the other to Lock Raven, have been preserved. About 1970, artist John Kendall captured the appearance of the station in this watercolor image. In 1892, an old boxcar provided the first Baldwin station at mile marker 18.4, which served as a ticket office. A stage line there provided transportation to and from other nearby villages. The old station burned, and in 1906, a new station was built that featured 23-inch wide boards in its construction. From the Baldwin Station, the Mon Pa Railroad meandered north, passing over Little Gunpowder Falls into Harford County, over a 420-foot-long steel viaduct, where only the abutments remain. After traversing another viaduct above Overshot Run, the train approached the station at Laurel Brook, where a milk platform is barely visible on the left. The Ma and Pa pulled into Falston Station at mile marker 22.3, where a rail spur made a connection with a warehouse that still stands, but today it operates as the Painted Mill. By 1941, the station had taken on the quiet air of a slumbering village, as automobile travel was eroding the need for a passenger railroad. Many years after the Ma and Pa's departure, the abandoned station was painted by watercolorist John Kendall. A station called Watervale, with a locomotive re-watering tank, had been established at mile marker 24.2 by 1893. But one year later, the station was destroyed by fire. The station was rebuilt, and the Watervale hamlet survived, as evidenced by a circa 1909 postcard illustrating a general view of the area. The station, now renamed Vale, is shown in a 1958 photograph after it had been abandoned by the Ma and Pa Railroad. By 2011, it had become overgrown with foliage and was later taken down. In early 1883, the railroad secured land in Bel Air for a depot at mile marker 26.5 that initially was operated out of a rail car on a siding. By the year's end, however, a two-story depot had been erected, providing a ticket office and waiting room on the first floor, and a residence for the station master on the upper level. As well, a turnaround Y had been built, as shown in green, and a windmill erected to pump water into a storage tank for steam locomotives. Upon being established in 1883, this station at mile marker 26.5 was called Melrose, a local name that still exists today. Almost immediately, however, it transitioned to Bynum and retained that name during its existence. The station served the local community as well as the Spenciola Farms Cannery that actually had a post office address of Forest Hill. The railroad reached Forest Hill at mile marker 30.1 in 1883, and for some time the station was located in the store of Rowan Tucker, 
Later, a Ma and Pa station house was built that served both passengers and freight. It's likely that Chestnut Hill brand tomatoes were shipped from the Forest Hill station. When the rail line was abandoned, it appropriately became a model railroad shop, but today is unoccupied. The Sharon station at mile marker 32.3 can be partially seen in the background of steam locomotive number six passing through the area. While Sharon was known for its canned goods, the nearby curving 451 foot long timber gross trestle attracted most of the attention of rail enthusiasts, as evidenced by Carl E. Gerber's photograph. Adventurous courting couples also found it exciting, and Ma and Pa's most iconic image, dubbed Choo Choo, was snapped there by James B. Gallagher in 1955. The Ferncliff station at mile marker 33.7 has the dubious distinction of being the site of a train derailment in 1948. Early on, Ramsey and Company at mile marker 35.3 served as a store, ticket office for the railroad, hotel, and meeting hall. Later, a Ma and Pa station was erected that also included a milk platform. It's likely that Grimmel's canned goods were shipped from the Rocks station. Near the station, a trackside tank supplied water for steam locomotives. Minefield at mile marker 36.9 appeared on the railroad's time schedule as early as 1896, but the station house and warehouse were not built until 1914. A circa 1970 watercolor of Minefield by John Kendall shows the passenger waiting platform and on the left a rail spur passing in front of a cannery. Originally known as Highland at mile marker 38.6, in 1895, the post office changed the name to Street to avoid confusion with other locations. An old photograph of a Ma and Pa train passing by the Highland Presbyterian Church serves as an iconic reminder of the tranquility of yesteryear. As illustrated by John Kendall about 1970, the station and the post office occupied the same building in 2011, it was a private residence. The Ma and Pa passed over a wooden trestle just before entering the Pilesville station at mile marker 40.3. A group of railroad workers later moved the station back from the rail line, making operations there more convenient. The old Pilesville mill, as painted by Dave Duran, produced grain that was shipped on the Ma and Pa Railroad. About 1970, artist John Kendall created a watercolor image of the station based on a photograph from an old postcard. Initially, this community was known as Cambria, so named for the Cambrian slate found in the region. For the post office, however, that descriptor was unacceptable, so Whiteford was adopted for the station at mile marker 42.4. Whiteford Station was in a dilapidated condition in 1972 when Robert A. Martello obtained permission to restore it as an Eagle Scout project. A more enchanting appearance of the station had already been painted by watercolorist John Kendall about 1970. This community at mile marker 43.3 was located in Maryland, adjacent to Delta, Pennsylvania, and early on was known as South Delta. One product shipped from the Cardiff station was locally mined serpentine and most likely canned goods packed by the W.H. Myers and Company. A train pulled by a locomotive leased from the B&O Railroad is shown at Cardiff with the crew pictured in the foreground. Artist John Kendall captured the station about 1970 with a delightful watercolor image. The Delta Station at mile marker 43.8 provided this Pennsylvania village with access to distant markets. One of the principal products shipped out was slate, which not only fueled the local economy, but was used in town for sidewalks and building construction. In 1941, the station became a hub for radio communication supplied by the Bendix Corporation. Locomotive number six is shown arriving in Delta in a photo taken by Carl E. Gerber. Possibly one of the products taken on was canned tomatoes packed by R.D. Snyder and company. 
Pictured is a photograph of Bryansville that was the location of the station at mile marker 45.9. It is probable that local canner Thomas T. Snyder shipped his canned tomatoes out of the Bryansville station to a market in Baltimore or in York. The economy of the hamlet at Castle Finn was fueled by a grist mill that was powered by a dam on Muddy Creek, and the mill was easily accessed via a covered bridge. The station featured a covered loading platform, along with an elevated structure for milk cans. Packer P.A.N.S. Small of York adopted a Castle Finn label for their tomatoes and their sugar corn. A photograph of the cannery at Southside shows the main line of the Ma and Pa along with a siding that served the packing house. T.T. Snyder and Sons at Southside canned locally grown tomatoes. The Woodbine Hamlet at mile marker 50.6 was passed by the Ma and Pa rail line with a spur that served the area. A packing house operated by C.E. Snyder canned tomatoes there. Two adorable young girls pose for a postcard photographer at Bridgeton Station, situated at mile marker 52.6. The platform in the foreground was for picking up and delivering milk cans. Packer R.B. Heisen was located at Bridgeton, producing cans of cream of corn. Bruce was a station stop on the Ma and Pa at mile marker 53.5. About 1945, engineer Raymond R.O. Picking was assigned to take Engine 28 with an excursion train from Baltimore to York. After passing through Bruce, he saw one of those little front pilot wheels come flying back past the locomotive's window. The train came to a rest on a hill. Not being safe to move forward, he backed up to Bruce and called for help. The railroad station at Muddy Creek Forks was located at mile marker 56.5 in the general store of A.P. Groves. Today, this facility is preserved as the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad Museum. During the summer, they offer rides in a gasoline-powered rail car, reminiscent of a trip on the old Ma and Pa Railroad. In years past, the location was a bustling venue for the sale of mill products and locally grown tobacco. The hamlet of High Rock was located at mile marker 57.1 along the Ma and Pa rail line. This postcard image could have been snapped on a Sunday, as evidenced by the well-dressed crowd. The community also boasted a cannery that could receive tin cans from an industrial area and ship their farm products to urban markets. The former Laurel Station at mile marker 59.4 is shown, and there still exists the foundation of the former hotel. The railroad passed by Harrison's Siding at mile 60.1, Devil's Backbone at mile 60.7, Fenmore at 60.9, and Brogueville at 61.3 before reaching Felton. Felton was a Ma and Pa station stop at mile marker 63.6 that resorted to using a sawhorse with boards to create access to a train car. A photograph of Engine 27 pulling cars out of Felton was captured by William Modinger about 1940. The 1918 track layout at Brownton Station, located at mile marker 64.8, identifies rail spurs accessing two different freight sheds, with the depot being adjacent to Brownton Road. Just south of the station, the Ma and Pa spanned a tributary called Pine Run, which is shown after Hurricane Agnes passed through in 1972. After passing by Windsor at mile 66.0, a station stop at Springvale was reached. When the postcard photographer snapped this image of the Springvale station and post office at mile marker 66.8, he invited the family to pose, including the children and a dog. Ma and Pa Trestle number 677 formerly spanned the road at the approximate location of the distant automobile shown here. 
In 1910, a wooden building at mile marker 68.3 served as the Red Lion Station, where the railroad staff was provided with interior office space. In 1926, this facility was replaced with a brick structure that is shown with railroad workers appearing outside, possibly when it was dedicated. In 2000, the station was purchased by the Red Lion Area Historical Society to serve as a repository for Ma and Pa history. Today, the station's appearance is much improved, as evidenced by a 2011 photograph. Ma and Pa trains moving through Red Lion passed under the Charles Street Bridge. In Red Lion, there existed a Ma and Pa junction that served the village of Dallas Town about 1.2 miles away. It's often said a train never pulled in the station there, as it always backed in from Red Lion. The village was well known for manufacturing cigar boxes. After Dallas Town, the railroad passed through Snyder at mile marker 69.6. Based on what appears to be a railroad man standing in front of S.J. Snyder's general store along the rail tracks, it can be presumed this was an early location of the Yo Station at mile marker 70.3. Later, another passenger station would be built in Yo, as well as a building for freight storage. Although not listed as an official station, Springwood Park was a Ma and Pa destination, as evidenced by the steps from the track leading to a pavilion. An excursion train from Yo is believed to be stopped at Springwood Park, where the adventurous crowd has posed in front of the locomotive. This old station house at mile marker 72.1 was still standing in 1987 when this slide image was taken. The indentation of the tracks can still be seen on the lower right. Just prior to the formation of the Ma and Pa in 1901, a July 1900 accident of a York Southern Railroad train put the Ben Roy station at mile marker 72.8 on the map. The train derailed as a result of a mudslide, and before the railroad could clear the wreckage, N.C. Stabley, a photographer from Red Lion, arrived on the scene and snapped images. Continuing its northern journey, the Ma and Pa passed Enterprise at mile marker 73.3 and Paper Mill at mile 74.4. Although this stop did not appear on the Ma and Pa's timetable, there were railroad tickets issued that validated its existence. The Ma and Pa Railroad then passed by Plank Road at mile 75.2, Norway at mile 76.3, Girard at 76.7, and East York also at 76.7, .7, before entering the last station at York at 77.2. The old Ma and Pa York Station has been refurbished and today serves as the maintenance center for the York County Housing Department. As York was the termination of the rail line, it was necessary to turn around locomotives for the trip back to Baltimore. Initially, this was on a turntable rotated by men using long poles. Later, air pressure from the steam engine operated a hydraulic cylinder that forced the engine around by engaging oak cogs. An old sign at York reminds viewers that the railroad was indeed the famous Ma and Pa.